What is Sherman's kyphosis and how do you treat it? The spine has natural curvatures that occur from the side for very specific reasons that are normal and healthy. And these natural curvatures make the spine stronger, they make it more flexible, and they make it better to absorb mechanical stresses that occur during activities and gravity. So basically, as the spine is being compressed throughout your daily life, these curvatures help your body or your spine resist those forces to prevent injuries and problems that could occur as a result of it. Now, these curvatures that occur in the spine have three main sections, and each section of the spine has its own characteristic curve type. And when we look at the sections, we're looking at the cervical spine being the neck, we look at the thoracic spine as being the mid-back, and the lumbar spine being the low back and we look at the two main curve types, we have two specific names that refer to the direction that the curve will be going into. A lordosis refers to the spine bending to the front of the body, and, a, and this is typically in the cervical and lumbar sections, and then a kyphosis refers to the spine bending towards the back of your body, and that's normally referred to the thoracic level. Now, we know that there's ranges for normal kyphosis and lordosis, depending on the section. But on average, we say the ideal number for the lordosis, kyphosis, and lordosis in each section is roughly about 40 degrees. However, there is a range, and most people consider somewhere between 20 and 45 to be considered a normal range. And when we talk about kyphosis specifically, we're normally talking, we're referring to the thoracic area. And typically, if that curve becomes greater than 45, normally greater than 50 is where we start to diagnose patients with something called hyperkyphosis. And this is where this curve now has become too big and it's out of the normal range. Now, a kyphosis also has different types, normally determined by causation. Just like scoliosis, we categorize it by causation. And the most common types is something that we call postural kyphosis. And this is divided into two specific categories, meaning functional postural kyphosis and structural postural kyphosis, which we'll explain that in a second, Sherman's kyphosis, and then something called congenital scoliosis. Now, postural kyphosis sometimes can be the easiest to treat because it's non-structural, meaning it's completely functional. And this is normally caused by chronic or poor posture or by not addressing certain lifestyles or some types of different things that could be causing the kyphosis to develop, you know, repetitive trauma. And normally this is, the, we can be treated through lifestyle, uh, lifestyle guidance, physical therapy, some exercises, can help improve posture, strength, and mobility around the spine to help improve the posture problem. However, if postural kyphosis remains uncorrected for a long period of time, it can now start becoming structural. And postural uh, kyphosis that becomes structural can be more difficult to treat, and it's normally treated like the ones that we're about to speak about, like Sherman's and congenital kyphosis, because once the kyphosis becomes structural, it becomes much more difficult to reduce or manage. And Sherman's kyphosis, is, by definition, is a structural condition that involves structural normality within the spine itself. So therefore, it's more complex to treat, meaning when something is structural, they can't just simply move out of it. They can't just simply ch change the way they're sitting or standing and reduce it significantly. They may change it a little bit, but not a lot. So therefore, it's more complex. This is normally when healthy vertebra are typically rectangular in shape, and they're stacked upon one another, causing the spine to have a certain shape to it. Or in Sherman's kyphosis, one or more of these ver uh, vertebra have become more triangular in shape or like a pie shaped. And when it becomes more pie shaped, like a slice of pie or a slice of pizza, like in this triangle, that this disrupts the normal spine's ability to maintain its normal curvatures. And normally it means it increases the curvature. These triangular vertebras become wedged and they normally kind of become more, uh, more thinner in the front and more fatter in the back. And normally the treatment for Sherman's kyphosis would be determined by the, really the, the age of the patient, the severity of, this, of the kyphosis, and of course the symptoms that are experienced. Experience. But normally it's treated structurally, that you're trying to trying to re control the kyphosis from involving and developing into more significant number. So therefore we can control the size. As Sherman's kyphosis gets larger, it's more likely to get larger. So size impacts how, how significant the curve can progress. Now kyphosis, unfortunately, can progress to very significant numbers. Like once it grace progresses beyond 50 degrees, it's considered a kyphosis. But I've seen kyphosis curves, you know, in the 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I've seen over 100 
120 degrees kyphosis development in the spine. So it can become very significant and become very severe. Now, treatment can involve many different kyphosis specific treatments like chiropractic care that can affect uh, kyphosis on a structural level. It can also, we look at therapy and exercises that can help deal with scoliosis specific or kyphosis on a structural level. But what's also very important is two components. And what I like to call is passive therapy or passive th physical therapy or even structural physical therapy. This is beyond their body's ability to move. And it's normally uh, a, a therapy that's involved in helping increase the flexibility of the kyphosis to try to get a reduction and improve flexibility to turn this structural component into a more functional component where it can actually move with normal movement. And of course, we also use corrective bracing to help push the spine and body into a better position. And this can be particularly effective if the patient is still growing. We know that the younger we catch a kyphosis and the sooner we treat it, the better the outcome would be. And this is also true with scoliosis. So the, the sooner it's treated, the smaller it's treated, the more effective the treatment will be because the curve is normally tends to be less structural and more postural. Okay. Now, congenital scoliosis is the last category to talk about. And congenital scoliosis is typically caused by a malformed bone that's more than just simple wedging. This is when this happens actually in utero and patients are born this way with a structural abnormality. And these malformations are called either hemivertebras or blocked vertebras. And what it means is that these vertebra have either fused multiple bones have fused together to create an abnormal shape or one bone didn't totally fuse together and it's formed into different separate structures. And this can cause an abnormal alignment and it can develop into a kyphosis and scoliosis. Now, unfortunately, congenital conditions can normally be combined or accompanied with other abnormalities of the, of the body due to malformations of different parts and systems within the body. So normally when we see con one congenital anomaly, we're searching for others because there's a high chance that there could be something else going on. Now with congenital hyperkyphosis, we know this can also worsen as the patient's growth. So normally we're modifying treatment plans to try to address the progression that could occur when patients are actually growing and developing. And unfortunately, as the curve is it gets bigger, Bigger while they grow, it can become more compli complicated. What's so difficult about congenital hyperkyphosis is how young it starts and how much growth is going to occur with the kyphosis possibly progressing. So again, early treatment is important. This really depends on the severity of the deformity, the severity of the, of the malformations within the spine in terms of how we can treat it conservatively. Now, when we look at Sermon's kyphosis specifically, we know it's a structural con condition. We know it requires proactive treatment that normally addresses it on a structural level and normally addressing the structural component, not the symptoms associated with scoliosis. I normally want to be very proactive in treating kyphosis as close to time as diagnosis as possible because we know the, the sooner we can address it, the, the more we can limit the structural component to worsen over time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.